My name is Alex Dolphin, and welcome back to another episode of Ex Ante. Today, we're going to discuss the case of Gasmaya versus Schaefer. This was heard in the Court of Special Appeals in Maryland in the year 1982. Let's go ahead and run through the facts. So, Gasmaya was a middle school teacher in Baltimore, and Schaefer was one of her students. Schaefer, running a typical middle school prank, pulled the chair out from Gasmaya when Gasmaya went to take her seat uh, in her chair. Gasmaya fell on the ground. Um, was obviously flustered and mad about the situation, stood up and went about her life. Um, Schaefer, I'm sure, was scolded by her teacher. We don't hear much about that in the case. Uh, three years later, Gasamaya brought a claim against Schaefer, claiming that Schaefer had been negligent when she pulled the chair out from underneath her, and it caused her injuries, uh, professional problems, and marital problems, and she sought to recover based upon those claims. Um, this went to trial and Schaefer's attorneys argued in the trial that rather than the tort of negligence, um, if Schaefer was guilty for anything, she was guilty for battery, not for negligence. So Schaefer's attorney wisely um, argued to have the jury instructions state that if the jury felt she was responsible for the tort of negligence, then to find in favor of Gasamaya, but if the jury found that she was responsible for the tort of uh, battery, that then they couldn't find in favor of Gasamaya because Gasamaya brought a negligence claim, not a battery claim. Ultimately, the jury found that uh, Schaefer was much more liable for battery than she was for uh, negligence. So ultimately, uh, Gasamaya lost her suit and Schaefer ended up uh, getting the verdict in, in her favor. Um, all seemed well. Uh, Gasmaya obviously wasn't pleased because they felt that they still had a cause of action. So they went ahead and appealed uh, to the Court of Special Appeals in Maryland. Um, their argument was that the jury instructions were flawed and that they shouldn't have a, uh, included this type of opposition between whether it was a, a tort of battery or, uh, or just a general uh, claim of negligence um, that was to be brought against Schaefer. Um, by Gasamaya. So they said that the jury instructions were flawed. So the question before the court was whether, you know, were the jury instructions flawed? And if so, did Gasamaya's attorneys raise this objection in the correct way? And so to answer that shortly, the answer was no. Um, ultimately, Gasamaya's attorneys uh, did not prevail on their claim that the jury instructions were flawed. Uh, the court went on to describe the reason why they didn't prevail. Um, was mainly because uh, Maryland statute requires an attorney to raise an objection to a jury instruction at the trial itself rather than in an appeal. Because they didn't raise a, this specific jury instruction objection in the trial, their objection couldn't be found or, or even thought much about at the appeal because it wasn't raised originally at the trial before the jury retired to find its verdict. Um, just read the, the Maryland statute briefly. It says, if a party has an, an obstruction to any instruction given or to any omission therefrom or the failure to give any instruction, he shall, before the jury retires to consider its verdict, make such objections stating distinctly the portion or omission or failure to instruct to which he objects. So Schaefer, uh, also won the appeal. Um, Gasamaya did not, uh, reasoning for the court uh, ruling that way is because there was no objection to the instruction um, at the trial court. So let's go ahead and jump to a couple of ex-ante implications and incentives that are generated by the precedent in this case. Um, there's kind of two obvious sides to the coin. You can think of the upsides, you can think of the downsides. So the upside to this ruling is efficiency for the courts. Um, they're not going to have or be inundated with thousands of appeals because of attorneys claiming that jury instructions were flawed. Uh, that's because it's necessarily gonna narrow the group of, of appeals that can actually be brought uh, based upon flawed jury instructions because if an attorney doesn't object in the moment at the trial, they're not going to be able to go ahead and bring this appeal based upon a flawed jury instruction um, to, to the appellate court. So it, it's definitely going to bring down the amount of cases that the appellate court has to hear. That will allow the court to hear the cases that are most pertinent and allow them to do their work in an efficient manner, which is something the court values um, is efficiency. So the downside to this would be that rulings might not always be just. Um, rulings might 
be ruled on in favor of you know one party or another based upon flawed jury instructions. Um, and if an attorney isn't quick enough on their feet to raise an objection to those jury instructions in the moment before the jury retires uh, to set its verdict, then those, ob those objections will never ultimately be heard or found upon. And um, incorrect or wrong or just ultimately misfounded jury instructions could end up permeating the system because attorneys aren't quick enough in the moment to come up with an objection to those jury instructions. Um, so uh, the, the downside to this is that if you can't hear um, an objection to a jury instruction on appeal, if it you know wasn't originally raised at the trial, that there's going to certainly be some cases where jury instructions are flawed, but folks don't raise objections to them at the trial. So ultimately, that person might be you know held liable or uh, in a case that where they shouldn't be. So that's kind of the downside to it. Um, there's a line that you have to teeter between efficiency and getting every case, case right, and I think the court had to try and walk that line uh, with this type of precedent that they set in this case. So thanks so much for watching. Um, if you have any other ex ante implications or incentives that you think are generated by the precedent in this case, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye.